stop. We are looking at an X1 carbon today, so we need the X1 intro. I always enjoy watching that intro. So, it's been a while since we've had a X1 Carbon on the channel, and I am happy to bring you, with the generous support of Waukegan Computers, the X1 Carbon Gen 5. So, the X1 Carbon 5th generation is a KB Lake 7th generation Intel powered machine and it is absolutely beautiful and packed full of features. Now, earlier I mentioned that I have Waukegan Computers to thank for this, and that is 100% correct. They have actually sent this model because they wanted to show off just how good they are at providing the refurbished computer experience. Now, for the ThinkPad aficionados in the room, I don't need to tell you that there are really good deals to be had on machines that are coming off of lease, that are being surplused, um, but sometimes you are taking a bit of a gamble with those machines, and there's a little bit of work that you're going to have to put into them to get them up and running again. And you have companies like Waukegan that are taking these machines and essentially doing all of that for you. So when it comes down to things like making sure that it's got all genuine parts, they look after that. They do all sorts of tests in terms of like diagnostic stuff, whether that's using the built-in tools. And they also make liberal use of Passmark Burn-In, which pretty much tests all the hardware components before it ships. And on the website, I really appreciate that they list the exact battery life. Now, a lot of other sellers are gonna say, yeah, there's battery wear, eh, don't care, don't know, and they kick the laptop out the door. Where it's kind of nice that they've taken the time, and that's part of what you're paying for here, to make sure that it's going to be a good experience out of the box. And I have to say, it was exactly that. It was a good experience unboxing. All I had to do was set it up. Windows was already installed. Once I was into Windows, I made sure that there was just a handful of updates since it was literally shipped. And then, of course, I ran the Lenovo system update to make sure that all the BIOS and firmware was good to go. And that was it. So we'll do a tour in just a moment, but let me talk you through the rest of the specifications. So we are dealing with, of course, a 14-inch form factor that sports either a 1920 by 1080 display or a 2560 by 1440. Now that latter display, of course, will be a little harder on battery life, but it's gonna look pretty good too. The fifth generation featured new technologies, for example, like a micro SD card slot, two Thunderbolt 3 ports or USB Type-C Gen 2, which means that your more traditional docks were no longer going to work on this model. So they're all USB Type-C docks from here on out for the X1 Carbon. And that of course includes the power supply. Moving along with our system specs, as I mentioned earlier, it is Intel Cabby Lake. So that means we're not quite at Windows 11 support yet. However, you either got an i5-7200U, an i5-7300U, an i7-7500U, and an i7-7600U. Your GPU was an Intel HD 620, which can drive up to three displays, the one that's built in, of course, and then two others. RAM was either four, eight, or 16 gigabytes of low power DDR3 1866 megahertz, and that is soldered on, so please be aware of that when you are buying these things. We also have a M.2 2280 NVMe style SSD hanging out on the inside, and of course, a variety of Wi-Fi modules came with this, and all of those sported Bluetooth 4.1. And of course, there was LTE options available for this machine as well. The loadout that Waukegan sent me is pretty much top of the line. Uh, it's the i7-7600, 16 gigs of RAM, and a decently sized 512-2280 NVMe. 
So I am not lacking anything. And the battery health is also quite good. And the battery is a four cell 57 watt hour, which is larger than the previous generation. The last thing that I will mention about this machine and its specifications is a recall that Lenovo did on a battery screw issue. Uh, the short answer is, is that a screw wasn't tightened properly and it could potentially cause damage to the battery. And I will leave a link in the description down below on how you can verify whether or not the machine that you have or the machine that you're looking at purchasing may or may not have the issue and whether or not it's been fixed by Lenovo. I'm happy to report this machine does not have the issue and it is not an issue that impacts machines that were built after November 1st of 2017. So let's take a quick tour of the machine as we have it in front of us. So we do have a beautiful island style keyboard with backlight. We do have a fantastic click pad with lots of real estate. No click at the top, but sound click at the bottom edge. We have good track point buttons and of course the scroll wheel as well. We have a fingerprint reader built in for Windows Hello and there is minimal wear and shine on the keyboard keys. We do have a little bit going on in the trackpad area, but that is to be expected with that generation of coding. Overall though, Waukegan did a very good job of cleaning the exterior top case as well as the screen. So let's close the lid and take a look at our ports. On the left-hand side, we have the two Thunderbolt 3 ports. One is dedicated for charging, and of course, a docking station is going to go uh, right there. We have one of the USB 3.0 ports. There are two, one of which is always on. We have HDMI 1.4, and then we have the really strange Ethernet um, essentially extension port that you would have on these machines. So you plug in a dongle, and then you get your full-size Ethernet port. Along the back, we can see the SIM slot, and that also doubles as our, our micro SD card tray. So if we eject that using a paper clip, we can see that the card goes in there, and then there's actually an additional slot uh, inside. So they have essentially sandwiched them on top of one another, and you just replace it back in there when you're done. And then along the right hand side, we have the Kensington lock slot, the USB 3.0 port always on, a generous exhaust fan, and a headphone microphone combo jack. And along the bottom edge here, we have two downward firing speakers. On the bottom of the machine, we also have part of the exhaust system as well as the serial number and all of the other information. So if you are looking up on the recall, these are the stickers that you need to make sure that you have the information from. So if you're looking at it on eBay or if you're looking at it in person, make sure that these labels are intact and then you are running them against that link that I leave in the description. You don't want to get yourself one that has not had the recall work done on it, or just be aware. So, with screwdriver in hand, let's open this up, see what our upgrade options are, and see Waukegan's efforts to clean up the computer before it was sent out for sale. It is worth pointing out that the reset hole, uh, which is used for all sorts of things, is located right here. So if you ever need to use it, it's hanging out right there. So once the five screws are loose, we can very gently just lift up along the back edge here. And the panel comes away. And it is looking mighty clean in here. And there's a few areas that I will point out that really tell me that for sure. We do see, of course, our four cell 57 watt hour battery. And that is in good condition, no swelling or bulging. Actually, let's use this stand here and throw it up to take a closer look. So as you can see, the fan is meticulously clean. There is no dust or grime buildup on the battery, which you do often see. All of the foam here is actually free of dust and debris. So it's either been cleaned or replaced. The board is absolutely 
spotless. I don't see any signs of any dust. Now, I suspect that this computer was lightly used given the condition on the exterior, but normally you do expect some level of debris on the inside. We do have our Wi-Fi card over here, and then we would have a spot for your LTE uh, compatible WAN card located right here. Unfortunately, the X1 Carbon Gen 5 doesn't support an additional SSD in this vacant slot, at least not to my knowledge. And of course, we have the cooler here, copper piping as you would expect, drawing air in from the bottom and exhausting out the side. Due to the design of the keyboard poking through the top case, if you are looking to replace that, you are looking at a complete disassembly of the machine to facilitate that. Overall, I am very, very impressed, not only by the X1 Carbon Gen 5 itself, uh, but Waukegan's efforts to keep it clean and in good condition. I don't have any complaints about what I found on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and close this back up and we can do some boot tests. All right, so with everything back together, let's go ahead and power this on and see what we get for a boot time. And there we go. The battery life on this will, of course, vary depending on how much it is used. But in terms of this computer's age and the fact that the battery is in such excellent condition, getting a decent battery life is going to be uh, a good expectation to have, especially if you have the battery settings configured at an appropriate level. So let's talk about pricing. The X1 Carbon Gen 5 essentially will hover around the low to mid 400 US dollar range because it is a fantastically built piece of kit. Now, I will tell you that if you are looking at Windows 11, the next generation, the sixth generation, has of course eighth generation Intel, which is by default supported by Windows 11. So while there is absolutely nothing wrong with this generation of X1 Carbon as a daily driver for the majority of tasks, if Windows 11 is a requirement, do know that the next generation up is actually not that much more expensive very often. Using Waukegan's own pricing, this uh, model is often sold around the 420 US dollar price point. And at the time of filming this video, they actually have the next generation with the eighth generation Intel CPUs for $449. So it's a small increase in price to gain access to essentially a uh, CPU that's going to be supported by Windows 11. So if that matters, you have a small increase in price to deal with, but overall, either one of those machines is going to be quite a pleasant experience. The eighth generation will have a few other smaller updates, but again, for the average user, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the fifth gen. Just make sure that you get that battery recall thing looked up before you buy one. I wanna thank Waukegan Computers again for providing this excellent example of not only the X1 Carbon Gen 5, but a good representation, I think, of the work that they do. So if you are in the United States and you are looking for a computer, especially in the Illinois area, I'm gonna leave some links down in the description below that you might want to check them out first because they seem to be a pretty reputable seller looking at this sample. And of course, if you are elsewhere in the world, then I will leave a few links as well that you might want to consider grabbing one of these machines from also. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this sort of content, then I would ask that you do consider to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I get an opportunity to take a look at a fantastic X1 Carbon, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.